a GOB. All right, so today what we're going to do is we are going to start our unit on trigonometry, right? Specifically, right triangle trigonometry. So the very first part of that is that we're going to have to talk about these things called trigonometric ratios. And despite sounding really smart when you say it, right, trig ratios are actually like super duper cool, at least in the math teacher way. So what the heck is trigonometry? You hear people talk about it all the time. They're like, oh, I hated trigonometry, but it's actually like not as bad as it might sound. So trigonometry is really just the study of measuring triangles, right? It's, it's giving us a bunch of different ways that we can talk about triangles, especially triangles of different sizes, right? A trigonometric ratio in the way that we're going to talk about it is just a ratio, right? It's basically a fraction of the side lengths of a right triangle. Right, so don't freak out when I say the word fraction, right? We're not going to be doing too much with fractions. They just show up as fractions. So then we got to talk about these two little bits that are really important. Right, when we're taking trigonometric ratios, right? We have these opposite sides and these adjacent sides. Right, so I've got this right triangle down here. And right, so let's say that I was talking about angle A right up here in the top part of the triangle. So angle A right, as denoted by the vertex it's at, right, is across from side A, right, so that's usually how we talk about triangles, is that you have a vertex, the side that's, like, far across the triangle, right, so, like, we have C, and then across from it is side C, we have B, and across from it is side B, right, that's how we normally name the sides. So, when we're talking about opposite sides, right, it's the side that's across from it, Right, so in this case, A is across from angle A. That is an opposite side for that one. Right? When we're talking about adjacent sides, right, these ones are the ones that give people a little bit of trouble. Adjacent just means next to. Right? So it's the side that's next to this angle that's not the hypotenuse. Right? So remember what you know about right triangles. Right? This one over here is the hypotenuse. Right, we can always tell which one's the hypotenuse because it's across from the right angle. Right? It's also usually it's also always the longest side of a right triangle. So that's the hypotenuse, which means that the adjacent side that we're going to be talking about is that one right there. It's B. Right? So if I'm kind of just taking a look at how I'm naming these sides, right? If I'm looking at angle A, this is the opposite side. This is the adjacent side. Right? So it really does matter. All right, let's take another quick look, right, and we're going to take a look at angle B, right? If I'm taking a look at angle B down there, right, then the sides are different, right? The side that's opposite from B is side B over there. The one that's adjacent is side A down there. You might notice that the hypotenuse stays the same, right? So the hypotenuse will not change. That's not what we're going to be worried about. Right? We're worried about properly naming these other ones. Right? A lot of times, or at least for what we're going to be taking a look at, we're not going to worry about angle C. Right? It's a 90 degree angle. There are some funky things that go on with trigonometry when you're working with right angles. We're not worried about those. We're going to be taking a look at the non-right angle angles. Right? So what we're going to do is you've got three main trigonometric ratios. All right, so let me see if I can get everything on the screen at the same time. Look at that, not too bad. So what we've got here is we've got this triangle. And we're going to take a look at just angle A. All right, so the first one that we're going to take a look at is just the sine of an angle. Let's zoom back in. So the sine of an angle, right, we usually abbreviate as S-I-N. Right, and then what we do is we put some parentheses after it and we put in the angle that we're talking about, right? So this A is actually the angle measure. And so when you're finding the sine or the cosine or the tangent that we'll talk about, when you're finding one of these trig ratios, you're finding it for an angle measure. Right? So the sine of angle A right, is going to be the measure. I'm going to use some abbreviations here. It's the measure. Oops. See if I can have this thing right. It's the measure of the opposite side divided by the measure of the hypotenuse. Right. So 
there is a shorthand way to write this, right? But that's really all we're doing, right? It's the measure of the opposite side divided by the measure of the hypotenuse, right? The way that you probably see this a lot is that people just talk about it as opposite over hypotenuse, right? Just quick little shorthand like that. So the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, right? Still taking a look at the same angle, if we're finding the cosine of that angle, we abbreviate it as COS. And then we do the same thing with the angle measure, throwing that in there to know which angle we're taking it in relation to. So the cosine of angle A is going to be the measure oops, of the adjacent side. Ooh, sorry, my stylus is freaking out a little bit. Divided by the measure of... The hypotenuse. All right. So again, on this one, we can do a little bit of shorthand, save ourselves some writing. It's the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Right. And you know, let's just talk about those ones really quick. So in this diagram that I've got up on the screen, right, that triangle that we were talking about a little bit ago, if I'm looking for the sine of it, right, the opposite over the hypotenuse, right, we're talking about angle A, the opposite side. Is that little a side the hypotenuse is C right it's that side that's labeled as hypotenuse there and right? so all I would have to do is divide like take a divide it by C and that's the sign of angle a same kind of idea for the adjacent part or the cosine rather the adjacent side is B and then the hypotenuse is still C Right, so to find the cosine of A, I would take B and I would divide it by C. Right? Nothing really too fancy other than that. That's really all we're going to be doing. Right? The last one is the tangent. Right? So the tangent we abbreviate is T-A-N. Right? And again, what we got to do is we throw parentheses with that angle measure on the inside. Right? And I'm going to kind of abbreviate this even a little bit more. Right? We've talked about the measure of the opposite and the adjacent and the hypotenuse. Right? I'm just going to skip to the little shorthand way of writing this. The tangent is when you take the measure of the opposite side and you divide it by the measure of the adjacent side. All right, so tangent is opposite over adjacent. All right, so again, in this case, right, if we're talking about angle A, right, the opposite side is that side A. The adjacent side is that side B. Right, so you can see that we use every each one of those sides when we're finding each of these trig ratios, right? The sine uses the opposite and the hypotenuse, cosine uses the adjacent and the hypotenuse, tangent uses the opposite and the adjacent. Right. So you might be thinking to yourself, like, oh my god, how am I ever going to remember which one's which? They seem so easy to mix up. So what you can do is you can we've got this phrase that might help, right? It's Sokatoa, right? What's kind of fun is that you can say it, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the Ricola commercial, right, for the cough drops. The guy's like, Ricola, right? In this case, it's Sokatoa, right? But Sokatoa, <laughs> sorry, is actually really helpful for all this. So, so, right? S is for sine. So the sine is the, oops, opposite over hypotenuse. Right? It tells you what order they go in. Right? Ka, C for cosine, and then A for adjacent, H for hypotenuse. T is for tangent, and then O is for opposite, A is for adjacent. Right? So just remembering Soka Toa, right? and again, it's good, you know, it's fine to take a little bit of time to remember that all the time. Right? That's how a learning works. Right? But this is this is really what was going through my head as I was working through that last page of notes there. Right? I was just saying out in my head, like, Soka Toa, S-O-H, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. All right, so that can really help out. So what we're going to be doing right, with this Soka Toa stuff for today is that we are going to just use this tri right triangle to find these ratios. And this is the part that can get a little bit tricky, right? Because it de does depend on which angle you're going from. So for these ones, we're going from angle P, right? Which is right down there. 
So let's start with that one first. So to find the sine, I need to take the opposite and divide by the hypotenuse. Right? So it might not be a bad idea. Right? Let's identify which side is which. So the hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. Right? So that's telling me that this 17 is my hypotenuse. Right, the nice thing about the hypotenuse is that it's not going to change depending on which angle we're looking at, right? P and Q, when we take a look at Q a little bit later on, right, those are both going to have the same hypotenuse because it doesn't move. Right? When we're taking a look at P, right, that means that this is the opposite side, right? Because it's across from the angle we're looking at. That leaves this third side, the 8, as our adjacent side. Right? It's next to the angle we're looking at, and it's not the hypotenuse, so that's the adjacent. So we're finding the sine. Again, it's the opposite over the hypotenuse. Right? So in this case, the opposite is 15. The hypotenuse is 17. 15 over 17, cool, done. That's really it. Right? What we could do with a lot of these, if you give me a second to boot up my calculator, right? is we can actually turn that into a decimal. 15 divided by 17 right, gives us, this is oh, gross, 0. Point, and we'll kind of have to round this off. It's called 0 0.88. It goes 0 0.88235294121. Right? But, you know, a lot of times we can round it to two, probably three decimal places. Let's throw a two on there. Right? So that's really what the sign is. Right, and you might be thinking, like, well, what good is that? So the nice thing about these trig ratios is that they tell you the relationship between the sides. Right? Um, what we're going to do a little bit later this week is that you're going to be able to find missing angles from knowing just the side lengths, which is actually pretty cool. Right? But for right now, we're just worried about finding these ratios, which just means putting it as this fraction. Right? If you can get it to the fraction, you can stop there for what we're doing. Right? You don't need to get the decimal right now. For the cosine of P, right, that's the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So in that case, the adjacent is 8, and the hypotenuse is still 17. Cool. Done. <laughs> that's really it. For the tangent, it's the opposite over the adjacent. So the opposite is 15, the adjacent is 8. Oops. And that is it. I'm trying to do my best to color code there. Cool. That's it. We're done with P. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at Q. So I, you might notice I'm erasing a little bit. That's because, again, we're taking a look at Q. And we're talking about this angle up here. So which one's my opposite and which one's my adjacent are going to move around a little bit. So opposite from Q is this side down here. Right. The adjacent one has now also changed, and now it's the 15. Right. So when we're finding the sine, cosine, and tangent, we got to keep those in mind, that they've now switched around a little bit. So the sine of Q is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Right? So the opposite now is 8. The hypotenuse is that 17. For the cosine, it's the adjacent, that 15, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 17. And then for the tangent, it's the opposite over the adjacent. So that's 8 over 15. Right. So something you might notice here, right, let me get that little decimal out of the way, right, is that some of these are pretty similar. Right? The sine of P and the cosine of Q are actually the same thing. The cosine of P and the sine of Q are actually the same thing. Right? And then these tangents are just flipped from one another. Right? So hopefully this kind of, you know, doesn't seem all that surprising because we're using a lot of the same, like we're using the same three sides. There's kind of changing which ones are referring to them as. Right. But all we're really worried about for right now is we're just finding those ratios, we're finding those fractions. Okay. So let's try another one out, right? If we're finding the sine of angle J, right, again, I'm taking a look at where that one is. Right. I'm just going to kind of set things up, right? First thing I should do is I should figure out which side is my hypotenuse. All right, so find the right angle, spit yourself across. 13 is going to be the hypotenuse for this one. All right. After that, you can take a look and say, all right, away from J, right, the angle we're looking at, that's my opposite side. 
the 12 is next to it, that's my adjacent side. And so, again, I don't have that that, that uh, Soka toe up on the screen anymore, but what we should be able to do is remember, so, S-O-H. So the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Right? Ka, cosine. C-A-H, so the, it's the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And then Toa, T-O-A, opposite over adjacent. And that's really it. Right? We're taking a look at these ones for K. Again, I'm switching the angle that I'm starting from. So that's going to move some things around. Right? Now my opposite side across from K is that one on the bottom there. It's 12. The adjacent side is now the 5. And so be real careful to pay attention to which angle you're going from because it might switch from one problem to the next. And so the sine of K, sine, S-O-H, so, so it's the opposite over the hypotenuse. Ka for cosine, it's the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so that's 5 over 13 here. And then Toa for tangent, so T-O-A, it's opposite over adjacent. Right. And again, for right now, that's all we're doing, is we're just finding these ratios. Right? Don't forget, though, that what I, what I could do, if I really wanted to, is I could turn all of these into decimals. Right? What that does is, no matter how big this triangle is, right, this angle K has a specific angle measure. If I looked at any triangle that has that same angle measure there in a right triangle, they're always going to be equal with these trig ratios, which is pretty, pretty nifty. Okay. The last little piece here, I'm going to work some editing magic. We're actually going to use Google Calculator for this. Right? Um, there may be some different things that you could do depending on what type of calculator you have. If you need help with how to plug these types of things into a calculator, you know, feel free to reach out to your teacher, whether it be me or whoever you have. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop over to Google Calculator real quick for the last little part of this and talk through how to use that to evaluate some cosines, sines, and tangents. Yeah. So what we're going to be doing here when we're trying to use the calculator, right, is that you're just going to want to go to Google, type in Google Calculator, and it should come up with something that looks like this. So one of the first things that you want to make sure you do when you're trying to plug these things in is make sure you're in degree mode. As you can see that when I clicked it, it kind of made it a little bit bolder, and this one kind of grayed out. I wanted to go back to, these are called radians. It's not something you're going to need for what we're doing. Uh, you can go back and forth with that. But make sure you're on degree mode. Right? Then right below degree mode, you can see that it has the sine, the cosine, and the tangent. Right? So all you need to do is this, you know, the first thing that we were trying to find was actually, whoops, the cosine of 39. So I'm just going to hit the cosine. I'm going to hit 3 and then 9, and then I'm going to hit enter. Right? And what that's going to do is when I'm finding the cosine of 39 degrees, that's basically like saying, like, all right, I've got a right triangle. I've got a 39 degree angle, and I want to find the cosine of it. So you might be thinking to yourself, like, wow, that's weird. It's not a fraction like a lot of the other things we were looking at. So the cool thing about trigonometry is that all cosines of 39 degree angles are always going to give you this, right? This is basically what the fraction you get would give you at the end, right? So the cosine of 39 is actually 0.777 or whatever you want to round that to every single time. No matter how big the triangle is, as long as you're taking the cosine of a 39 degree angle, right? Let's try and do, the next one was the sine of 67, right? So if I find the sine of 67, that's telling me that, you know, if I compare the sides that it relate to a 67 degree angle and I'm taking the sine, that fraction is always going to come out as 0.920504853455, right? So every single time that I take the sine of a 67 degree angle, it's going to end me up with that as a fraction, right? The fraction might look a little bit different depending on how big your triangle is, right? If it's a bigger triangle, the side lengths will be larger. It's smaller triangle, the side lengths will be smaller. But when you simplify that fraction, it should give you this decimal. The last one that we were trying to find is the tangent of 56. So just type in tan and then 56. Boom, look at that. 
right? That's really all there is to it. Right? So again, important thing when you're using this Google Calculator is just go to Google Calculator, just like literally search for it. Make sure you're in degree mode, right? Because let's try this tangent of 56 with radians. If I then try to do the tangent of 56, gross, negative 0.6112. Oh, woo. that is very different. But if I take the, if I pop it back into degree mode and take the tangent of 56, that's what we're looking for. All right, so degree mode is really important for what we're doing here.